Hello there. Today's lesson is 1.2b, functions and their graphs. We're going to be concentrating on the graphs of functions. The This lesson section is divided into two parts. I talked about the um, previous parts in another video, but this one is going to concentrate on graphs. So we're going to talk about graphing functions by plotting points, using the vertical line test to identify functions, obtaining information about a function from its graph, identifying the domain and range of a function from its graph, and then identify intercepts from the function's graph. So in case you can't tell, you need to be able to read graphs of functions. So first off, the graph of a function is plotting or the graph of its ordered pairs. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is show you how you're going to do this in my lab map. So this first problem says, given these two functions, they want you to graph them on the same coordinate system. So you can click it over here, or you can click it right there to enlarge the graph. And what you do have to recognize is what that shape is. And I think most of y'all know that x squared is a parabola, and it tells you three-point quadratic tool. So you've got to know the main point of the graph. And then if you go over one, up one, because one squared is one, you can go in both directions, and then you have that. I just clicked off of the graph to make it stay. Now, y equals x squared plus 2. Okay, if you do not know what that looks like, okay. Um, hopefully you remembered from last year, but it was the beginning of last year, so you might not. But that is adding 2 to every value of this function. So if I take 0 and add 2 to it, then I'm going to go here. And if I take this point and add 2 to it, I'm going to go there. So it's going to look the same. I'm going to take that point and go up 2, and then over 1, up 1 from there on both sides. So that's what I've got. And I'm going to check my answer. They liked it. And then they're going to say, describe what happened. Well, the graph of G was shifted vertically up, horizontally left, vertically down, and horizontally right. And y'all know that it's vertically up. So you've got a quadratic that you got to be familiar with. Next is an absolute value. So here is the absolute value tool. And again, its key point starts at the origin, and it also goes over one, up one. And because I have the graph, I actually only need two points. But on the quadratic, you have to have three. So I click outside of it, and um, I was fortunate enough to get the similar function. Um, absolute value of x plus 2. Well, we just talked about that. It's going to move everything up 2. So over 1, up 1. And there is my graph. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to check it. It's going to tell me excellent, and then I'm going to go and tell it has been moved vertically up. Okay, last example here. So we did a quadratic, we've done an absolute value, and now a square root. Okay, and this one, a little more challenging for people, but it's asking you to actually fill in the table first. So if I plug in 0, the square root of 0 is 0. Then it says, well, go plug 0 into G, then I'm going to get 0 plus 4, which is 4. And then it's going to ask me to go plug in 1. So I plug in 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Oh, that's so slow. And then I plug in the next one, square root of 1 is 1, and then add 4 to it. I'm going to get 5. And I think it's going to be, yep. And notice, y'all, that these numbers, which is what exactly I would do if you had to do it by hand, these numbers are perfect squares. We've kind of talked about those perfect squares. So those are the numbers that you want to plug in here because those are the easiest ones to find. Square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 4 is 2 plus 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. Okay. And we got one more. Square root of 9 is 3. I didn't like my 3. Come back. Give me a 3. Square root of 9 is 3. And then add 4 to 3. And I'm going to get 7. And now that makes it easier. And this time you just have to pick which graph. So you can enlarge it. Okay. 
But f of g, all right, if I enlarge this for y'all, I'm going to keep it like that, okay? f of g, excuse me, f of x starts at 0. That is, so they all start at 0, 0, but this one doesn't, so I can knock this guy out, okay? But my graph moved up. From blue to red, it moved up. So I'm going to pick this one. i got to click in there, and we got it. So that's what you need to be familiar with. I'm going to go back and finish. Okay. So another thing I know you learned in a previous class was something called the vertical line test. And if any vertical line intersects a graph in more than one point, the graph does not define Y as a function of X. So here's an example of two, well, two graphs. One of them is a function and one is not. So if I look at this graph, and I cross the vertical line and I touch it more than once, it is not a function. So this one is not a function and this one is a function. It does not matter where I draw that vertical line, I will always only touch it one time. Okay, another thing you got to be able to do is evaluate, uh, get the values from a function. So I have used this graph to find f of 5. So we have average T cell count. This is our y-axis. Time after infection in years is the x-axis. If they want f of 5, I know you all are going to tell me that that means that's the x. So f of 5, I'm going to go on my x-axis. I'm going to find 5. I'm going to go up, and it is approximately 400. So I'm going to say f of 5 is 400. On the next one, for what value of x, is f of x 100? All right, that one you want to remember, y'all, that that 100, okay, is representing my y. And I'm looking for the x that gives me 100. So this time I'm looking for 100 on the y-axis, which would be halfway between 200 and 0. So I'm going to go across, and it looks like I'm going to go with right there, which is 9. So f of 9 is 100. But to answer the question, what value of x, then I'm going to say x equals 9. And so that's what my answer is going to be. Okay, we talked about domain and range earlier, but you got to be able to do it. So before we did it from an equation, and we um, talked about the input. We did it from a set of ordered pairs. But now we have to be able to do it from a graph. So we're going to find that domain. We're going to look for all the inputs along the x-axis that correspond to the points. And to look at the range, we're going to go to the y-axis, okay? So look at this first graph. If I am looking for the domain, okay, that's my x values. So I am looking along the x, and what is farthest to the left is negative 2. So I'm going to go, say, and farthest to the left is negative 2, and farthest to the right is 1. So that means that I'm going to have go from negative 2 to 1. But now we have to talk about what the difference, what the two different symbols that you're going to be using. And if you have a closed dot, then you will always have a bracket. And when I say closed dot, that's here. That would be what would, because it's equal to 2. And if it's equal to 2, think about that little straight edge there then that means that's part of an equal sign, so it's equal to it. If the dot is open, then that means that I'm going to have a parenthesis. So this case, at negative 2 and 1, those are both closed dots, so I'm going to have a bracket around both sides. Okay, on my range, okay, I'm looking for the lowest y value. So I'm going up and down. The lowest value is right here, and that is at 0. And the highest value is at 3. So this one's going to go between 0 and 3. Again, both dots are closed. So we're going to have brackets on both sides of that. Okay? So sometimes that's a little challenging. I'm actually going to do another one. All right, look at this one. I have a graph. And if you notice, this time I actually have an open dot somewhere. So let's see what it's going to, where it's going to show up. So again, my domain is my x. This is my x. So I'm looking farthest to the left is negative 2. Farthest to the right is 1. So my graph is going to go between negative 2 and 1. And when I look at negative 2 and I go to the graph, that's an open circle. 
so it will be parentheses, and the 1 is a closed circle, so it'll be a bracket. Next, I have my range. I'm looking up and down. What's the lowest value? The lowest value is right here at negative 1. The highest value is at 2. So this one starts at negative 1 and goes to 2. Negative 1 is a closed circle, so it will have a bracket. And 2 is an open circle, so it will have parentheses. Um, one thing I do want to mention to y'all is that these numbers always have to go in um, numerical order. So if you always read from left to right and then go from the lowest to the highest, then you won't have any trouble putting that. But just know it's got to be in alphabetical order. Okay, the last thing we got to talk about, intercepts. Define the intercepts. Okay, your look x-intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, they're also known as zeros, but remember when you give an answer, okay, it can be written as that number, comma, zero. Define the y-intercepts. You look at where it crosses the y-axis, and that, of course, would be a number, I mean, zero, comma, and then the number. Okay, um, please remember that a function can have more than one x-intercept, but it can have only one y-intercept. Otherwise, if you know the answer of why it can only have one intercept, you tell me and you will get a piece of candy. Okay? So, identifying intercepts from a function's graph. So when you look here, and I'm looking for the x-intercepts, all right, I'm looking here. X-intercepts are going to be those in red. That's where it crosses the x-axis. So I wrote mine as ordered pairs. You've got to pay. If you want to get it counted right, y'all pay attention to the program. And the program says, you know, if it says just give the number, sometimes it says give the ordered pair. Sometimes it says give the number. So you've got to read the fine blueprint in there. But, of course, that negative uh, 3, 0, then I have negative 1, 0, and then I have 2, 0. And my y-intercepts, I only have 1 because I can only have 1, 0, negative 6. Okay, that is all we have. We have identified a lot from our graphs. So um, thank you so much for watching. Write down what you need to to remember these concepts. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.